Hi, everyone. Uh, first, thanks for inviting me to give you some insights about our research with my colleague, uh, Jérôme Duberry, who is the research lead. So first, let me tell you that we are both av available if you have any suggestions, comments, um, further questions about our research. So you can reach us through my email. Uh, let me put this, yep. Um, here. So first I thought uh, I would introduce myself. So um, I have a social science background, so I'm not a technical person and I'm not able to explain you how AI works. But my question here is more about what do we do with AI as a society? So here I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of our ongoing research and specifically we are writing a literature review about AI and democracy nexus and I am sure that you have a pretty good knowledge of how AI can harm democracy and specifically we all have in mind numerous cases of uh, political manipulation and surveillance mechanism. So these issues raise many questions about specific persuasion techniques and neuromarketing methods applied to politics. And even if um, manipulation and opinion influence is maybe as old as democracy, computational methods are clearly bringing more challenges and concerns. But maybe I will say a few words about how big tech companies um, have an influence in our daily life. So their commercial and business model is based on algorithmic rec recommender systems that make you stay on their platforms. At this stage, and probably you already know it, but as they aim to make users click more and more, we have to keep in mind that they want you to stay longer on their platform and buy products. So your attention and your time is actually very profitable for them. But they, they did not consider this before and their business model does not, does not take into account the, the content itself. Let's say conspiracy content or fake news content is not their concern, at least at the beginning of their uh, business. And then on a political level, we saw how this happens through case, cases like Cambridge Analytica, which used Facebook's um, ad targeting system designed to beforehand for traditional commercial purpose, but at the end, at the end, it had influence on um, election outcomes. So I'm sure that you would probably have um, a pretty fair knowledge of all these challenges linked to AI. So I'll try to focus here on promises and how AI can help to support civil society to engage more on politics, meaning that. As we all can um, notice how citizens tend to distrust democratic institutions because they can find maybe that technocrats are in command and do not con consider citizen needs or maybe with the rise of populist parties and extreme right parties. And so AI could potentially stand as a tool to help citizens or maybe if we go a bit further to help us rethink and rebuild democracy as a regime because some would, th would think that democratic institutions were created centuries ago and do not suit anymore our modern world and the urgencies of our time. So AI could be such a great tool, for example, if we think about SDGs and how AI could act for social good or help scientists uh, analyze data on biodiversity and so on. So basically our work with Jérôme was to try to review the scientific literature to conceive a state of the art. And we, we did a thorough uh, selection of articles related to the challenges of AI and democracy nexus. And then we categorized them into, into different main categories. And these categories emerge from the data contained in the selected articles. So we, we noticed that in the scientific literature, AI is considered into areas like political processes and citizens' opinion. So how can AI extract citizen opinion about politics to formulate social or political po political problematic into policies or to, to evaluate these policies? But else, also, um, AI recommendation, recommendation systems could actually stand as a barrier against false news, but I do not have time to go much deeper for this, but just for you to, to know. 
Um, besides, I wanted to give you a little bit of a context of why we need more citizen participation. As you notice, maybe in 2020, for, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, contemporary societies are increasingly facing narrow political and social problems, which are referred in the literature as wicked issues, and which require a comprehensive examination of social societal stakes and which call from uh, more complex solutions. So for this reason, political elitism and technocracy are no longer considered relevant when acting alone in the formulation of public policies. So here it is about supporting citizens to balance political views besides technocrat views. But this can also be true for balancing media elites in, the, in, um, in a different um, context. So I want to, you to perceive political participation not only through electoral moments, uh, but also to see how citizens can, can be involved in the construction of a common future through different tools. And here social media play a great role to mine opinion and sentiment about these wicked political and social problems. And citizen participation at this different stage, as you can see, for ag agenda setting, policy formulation, implementation, adoption, and evaluation. Um, it is a recent trend that also allowed government to take greater account of citizen demands to include them in, and to legitimize government decisions. So it is exactly here where AI could be useful with the data available on social media, in particular because they are a colossal source of citizens' opinion and feelings. So the following example of AI supporting citizens in political processes are actually tightly linked to social media and to opinion extraction. Here, as you can see, as a basic reminder, as I said, uh, there are different stages of polit political processes. And, um, and this is exactly uh, where AI can be useful. So as I mentioned, social media are a great source of information and communication between government and citizens, and their use has a great impact on policy processes. It impacts the first task of each policy cycle, which is problem definition and agenda setting. And policymaker can also discover problems in the society that need to be tackled. And also after policymaker can measure not only happiness, but also opinions of citizens with regard to this policy, but also arguments supporting these opinions. So for instance, natural language processing and sentiment analysis are useful computational techniques to analyze textual data posted on social media by citizens. The extraction of opinion formulating, formulated on blogs, discussion forum, or social networks can, can make citizens' voice heard, but also about citizen reasoning and conceptualization of specific poli political issues. So it becomes very crucial asset for, for policymakers who are more and more aware of the lack of legitimacy and distrust of democratic institutions. And so before jumping in the specific example for from our literature review, I wanted to share with you one example that you certainly heard during the sunflower movement in Taiwan. So I'm not an expert on social movements, but I, what I want to say is that they conceived an online consultation process that enables citizens to participate, which is called Virtual Taiwan. And the main goal is to let citizens participate online with the core idea to elaborate public policy from the bottom. So citizens are able to produce statements and then share with other users and submit these statements to a vote. So AI here serve as a tool to promote interactions between users, but also its main action is to analyze data contained in the statement and find similarities to bring consensus between citizens. So here I want to uh, highlight that, as you may know, online discussion on social media tend to to polarize people and create echo chambers where people would, would not find directly um, different views to nuance their position. Oh, they, they, they will rather find complete opposite views that will tend to create hate speech between users and polarize them. 
And this is, this is one of the effect of big tech companies, algorithm. But here we see that algorithm can do the exact opposite and bring consensus between users to support their participation in policy making processes. And so to go back to the policy processes and how we, we found that in the literature review, my first, my first example from our literature review is uh, coming from Huber and All, which is um, an article presenting the Twitter analytics for government intelligence and, pu um, and public participation. And the analysis of Twitter activity through visualization techniques shows citizens' interests and sentiment towards specific policy reform. And this Twitter analytics for government intelligence and public policy participation tool allow to seize different emotions such as trust, joy, fear, anticipation, according to the Plutchik wheel of emotion. Plutchik is a psychologist and, and he made this, uh, this wheel of emotion. And the researcher used this, uh, this wheel to classify data on citizens' emotion. And also with world cloud analysis, uh, researchers have been able to, um, to quantify data and to classify them. So uh, according to the number of tweets, retweets, comments, or word repetition, so government have been able to identify salient topics. And similarly, I think of another example that I did not um, include here, but I seem it's relevant to, to, to bring it here. So it's the approach of uh, Parashar and, and Gupta who extract and analyze the uh, citizens' opinion using support vector machines that allow to easily classify in particular citizens' opinion retrieved from microblog platform, such as Facebook or Twitter. And then they categorize opinions by age group and profession which allows to consult in a targeted way the opinion of a group of citizens concerning policy measures that is intended for them or that will have an, an effect on this specific uh, social group. Thus by being classified upstream relevant opinion can be easily retrieved and used to empower citizen participation and support government decision making processes. So I'll finish here and maybe give you two uh, key takeaways. So there are still many open questions about transparency, fairness, representation when using AI, but there are many promises that are elude, eluded. So I really invite you to consider these questions and think that there is no wrong or right answer. And we are still considering many opportunities and trying to figure out whether AI can be more corrosive than supportive to democracy. But we can so also ask ourselves, do we want AI to be included, included in reshaping democracy? Is it something that we want as a society? Is it more useful than harmful? So I fin finally wanted you to think that as citizens or a research as researcher in social sciences, we do not understand how AI work. But as, as it has a huge impact on society, not only on democracy, but work, on art, etc. And as AI designers do not necessarily have all the keys to design it fairly and for social good, we need to all think about it and maybe, if not finding answers, but at least try to raise questions and provide opinions to advance research and designing of AI. And finally, I wanted to show you a short video from an MIT researcher, Cesar Hidalgo. So we started our research from this point. He mentioned the use of AI to enhance communication between citizens and between citizens and their representatives by reimagining the way we are represented. So I leave you with that, and then we can discuss about it. Thank you very much.